Hi, um, and thanks Scott for um, having us back. It's a, an enormous privilege, and I um, promise not to make anyone cry this time. Um, also, thank you for um, having all the good speakers on before us. Um, so, I wonder when they wouldn't have last year. I was actually speaking at the conference last week and I came on just after the guy, the cave diver, who actually rescued the 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously we heard his amazing story and I was sitting there in the green room thinking, seriously? <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so we are going to be talking about our journey with induction. Um, Anyone had uh, any experience with induction recently? Like anyone delivered the induction in the last one year in your department? Anyone had induction for themselves? Yeah. Uh, those not. Was there any induction you had which you would remember it when you like induction? You felt like it's really good, you felt really welcome, you felt like a part of the team, and just meeting new, new people in the first one or two days and thought, that's it, this is the place where I want to be. Anyone remember in the room the induction they had it? So, uh, you know, it's a bit of a blue bloom sliding here, like every time there's an induction and there's nothing much happening in the media by somehow BBC or something. You just go in and they will just put this Black Wednesday because it's the August induction that people will die, so don't go to A. <laughs> because there's like this controversial paper which says like there's a six percent chance of increased mortality, so it's being taken from. 170 and trust and things, all controversial. But anyhow, coming to the point, we, we all recognize the induction is important. Handover is a time where there's a bit of a risk of things going here and there. So all the trust they want to do is they want to risk stratify there, make sure the induction is really safe, the new doctor that they're coming in the shop flow, they're feeling really comfortable and you as your uh, as the supervisor and trainer on the shop floor you are very confident with this absolute new team who so doesn't know the environment they are able to see the patient safety. So what we wanted to do obviously yes so there's that trust obligation and, and just part of you know the trainees and the nurses etc that there's an obligation to provide induction but we wanted to reframe it and rather than induction as a risk management exercise which it seems to be in a lot of places um, we wanted to reframe induction as an exercise in welcoming new joiners, new colleagues, jo joining the team, whether it's for four months or for longer, um, and inculcating them with essential information about how to survive and thrive in the department, but also introducing them to the culture and values and the behaviours that we expect of each other in our department. So, how many times do you think the induction happened in an emergency department? once, twice, three times. So, but if you look at it more closely, you'll find out there's a quarterly FY2 induction, then every six months there's a CT1 induction, GP VTS induction. Then, like most of the emergency department, we are also moderately dependent on the local doctors, so you need to make sure they have uh, some sort of induction done <coughs> in your department for the first time. Then the international doctor, recruitment and then those of people who may join the NHS International, they have a very good induction, so they know their department well. So it's very well good to say I will work on the thing, but if you look at it, it's about like six, seven times you have to repeat the same process in your department. And this is the integral part of the education where you have to educate your new doctors and make them feel really welcome and make sure that they have all the skills to look after the really sick population. So, induction at the moment, what we do is for our FY2 induction, we have two days induction, each day is about eight to nine hours long, three to four consultants involved, lots of topics. We want them to know what is the emergency medicine is, what are the core contents, what are the essential things. So it's a lot of information overload. It's like a rental from horse bike. And it's really, like if you look at it in yourself, if you remember when you first time ever join emergency medicine on your first day and then people are coming and showing your faces and saying hello. You, you have a lot of anxiety because 
It's terrifying to work for an emergency department where you have to do all the decisions by yourself. You're seeing the patient and most of them, either they get discussed or seen or they may not be even seen and just get discharged. So it is, it is a terrifying as a relatively junior person to come in an emergency department. So on the both hands, I think we need to look at the sort of balance where we deliver the contents and then the contents stays with the potential of the content rather than everything get delivered and thrown into the faces. So we decided to just start from scratch again and just look at what we had and radically revise uh, induction. Uh, we also decided that we would use QI methodology, which I'm sure so many of you are familiar with, so that we could actually plan our interventions, decide what our change ideas are going to be used in, in an iterative process, but also measure the effects of our success uh, in different ways so that we could demonstrate uh, whether we've done the right thing or not. So we start from very scratch. Uh, I've been involved in the production of the department for the last few years, so what we did, and we looked at it with a critical eyes and I found out that few, it was mainly lecture-based induction where everyone sitting around the room, they would all spend eight, nine hours, we would deliver those lectures, it would be like a one or two other session where people would get off, look around the department, they would do like a one or two simulations. Um, all the lectures they were like written a few years ago, and then the induction contents was, it was not too bad, but it wasn't really up to the scratch where, where I think it could have reached, so, Induction traditionally is like consultant comes in, they say hello, and they tell the new doctors how they wanted to work, and they will tell about what are their own projects and what are the things they like, rather than <coughs> standard content, standard method of delivery, standard like uh, information which everyone should take home messages would be different. So we started with your methodology, so first of all, we got the engagement process where uh, we got the feedback from all the outgoing doctors. We asked them how did they feel about the induction. Then we asked them how did they feel two weeks after the induction, how well equipped they felt while doing the job. Uh, we asked all the members of the faculty, we asked the, the nursing staff how they experienced with the new doctors with the induction and how did they feel. And then there were multiple meetings with different group of the people working in emergency department and across and the medical team and other uh, specialities to know exactly like uh, want to know like what they want in induction so we, we started from the very beginning and uh, turns out to be there's a lot lot and lots of feedback there's a few important things which uh, we found out like there was a lot of repetition so for some reason we were talking a lot about chest pain, okay, rule out AAA, rule out thoracic dissection, rule out subrectal right hand ridges. So there was a lot of repetition. So we were just talking about the same topic like a three, four times. There were like information overload. There was too much information. Uh, take home messages were minimum. And frankly, some topics were really boring. I don't know why they just appeared in the induction. Maybe like uh, in the historically someone thought, okay, yes, yes, some, and, and the group said, we haven't had any teaching on the suture. Let's just put the suture in this time. Fine, okay, no, I think sepsis is really important. We need to have like a two hours lecture on sepsis. Or we need to go we haven't done enough of the scene now, let's just do some. So it wasn't really like a standard, so it was more historically developed, as I'm sure this is it's like most of the induction around the uh, The admin process was really tedious, like you have to come in, you have to make sure that you sit your tea pad and you, you just have to queue up and then you get your a and T and all those things done. So it was, it was taking like a lot of time and too much time was wasted. So we said we would have a set aim that our junior doctors, they will have the maximum information retention in our induction and then we will, we will do things slightly different than the traditional way. We and we, so, so we thought as a, as a kind of measurable outcome measure going to sustain the QI <coughs> well, we thought we'd, we'd, we'd look at that, so the degree of information retention as, a, as an outcome measure. But also the underlying themes that we planned were 
feeling positive rather than terrified uh, about starting a job in the ED. Mm -hmm. A sense of belonging to the team, uh, even if they were rotating through about four months. Yes, some warnings about pitfalls, but not scaring the shit out of them about every patient with every 23 year old male with chest pain that's got a dissection in that kind of thing. Yes, also, yes, we have to do the boring admin because that was really important about getting ID badges and scrubs, but kind of doing it in a more coherent way. But then also placing an emphasis on um, looking after yourself, looking after each other, your own kind of well being, resilience. And then also getting to know the department, your environment, your colleagues, your hospital, etc. So the so we designed our project and we decided that our intervention would be at the end of our project we will completely revise all the contents. We will identify what is the real core content which we need to give in the intervention. Um, we decided we're going to use different alternative teaching methods, which we will discuss more in detail later. We will have good use of simulation and we will <coughs> make sure not only we will deliver it, we will measure it and we will have some sort of a qualitative and quantitative measure to see how we are performing. So we did our first <coughs> PDS cycle. Um, the contents we managed to revise about 25% of the content and we kind of like rewritten everything, took away all the boring stuff uh, they actually provided lunch at the neutral cost all the days. Um, all the like a sleep hygiene and different well-being topics they came in and then we said instead of like terrifying everyone about the SIs from the trust before management said we must tell everyone about the recent SIs or the historic SIs. Uh, I used uh, TED Talk where uh, Brian Goldman talks about the literature of the mistakes and then talked about all the cases and talked about that how we can have a free lesson and avoid being terrified because of the so and so as I am. Um, and it's a flavour of some of the slides from our introduction to the QTA. Uh, an idea of, um, yeah, sorry, not sorry for all the men. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us how you did the slides. <laughs> Um, I would just briefly touch about the international doctor induction. So what we've done, that all the international doctors, they will come in, they will first join those two days, then they will have a three to a month long ongoing induction on the shop floor where they will have their work-based assessment and one-to-one -one consultant teaching. There. They will have their gradual progression, regardless of how senior they are, they will start and then slightly dripping and then eventually like progressing to the full flow subject to their doing and then getting the induction as required. Um, so the measurement we use qualitative or quantitative. So we used a quiz and the quiz was an anonymous quiz where everyone after the induction within the first two weeks they would just go in and fill it and email it back. Uh, it was not uh, like a pass or fail, it was actually the anonymous quiz which was scoring us, not them, but it was a kind of like a open questions and then a few questions were like really non-clinical. So there was a question about uh, species living at the top of the tower at Turing Cross. I'll tell you the answer to that. Like this kind of information or like uh, uh, in one of the talks there's uh, like an Australian army general said this thing. What was that thing? So you know those like the little things, and if you are paying attention, if you are kind of drawn into it, you will answer. And the point about this is, this wasn't an exam. This wasn't a test, and the new doctors would get in trouble if they didn't score well. It was a way of us evaluating how effective our information transfer was, if you like. So uh, as we found in certain areas. There was one bit about where you introduced yourself. We were introducing the consultants. So we had slides about the consultants. Um, and people just didn't remember, seemed to remember everything to consult its names uh, unless they actually there in the induction. So then we mix it up a bit, so we put consultant baby pictures, because I'm just from a previous thing, I've just got all, our, all, all of my colleagues' baby pictures somewhere. Uh, and that seemed to help, that seemed to help with the, uh, the information retention and retention of the names. So 
I, I would just like to put the picture of the consultant and then ask the group, what do you think when looking at the picture what the personality would be? Essentially, it would be like a, it would be like a very a close, yeah. close group thing. It's a medical <laughs> yeah. and, and it's like amazing like how you can break the ice and how suddenly like a terrifying group like opens up and then be, be part of your own team. Uh, so the scoring is uh, kind of, we found out that when we were doing in our uh, different way of induction, people were scoring like about 70% of the retention rate, which is, I think is quite good. I'm not really sure if it's how well it is with the literature around the retention rate. And then the middle bit is we just did a, like a one day office based, just a lecture based, because Frankly, there were not many people who were going to that induction, and turns out to be the retention rate so that we down. Um, also, like we found in the scoring, there were a few questions like people were not really doing very well, and essentially, turns out to be that we were not delivering it, so we need to go back and revisit it. Um, and essentially, um, it was about the style of the induction. It was about the delivery of the induction, it was about the method of the induction which affected the results and it turns out to be how good or bad people were getting the information. So it's all about uh, old style lecture based people were loading sleeping because we were talking about the sepsis, we were talking about the things and we were using different gaming methods. People were active, enjoying, listening, learning. So the quantitative uh, was simple. The qualitative was a bit like we have to get the feedback, not only the simple scoring feedback that everyone just wanted to fight for you. We just got the local faculty group and a free feedback on like uh, each monthly where people will talk about induction and the problems they had. Uh, we will have the two weeks feedback from everyone that how they exactly felt after starting the job. And similarly, Everyone, and every junior doctor who had any idea about induction, we decided that we will incorporate it and it will be a continuous process that every time there will be some comments or suggestions will be incorporated because at the end of the day it's their induction. Uh, the second cycle we did was uh, in February 2019 where uh, we completed all the core contents, revised, made all the new slides, all the different slides, got uh, more simulation resuscitation stories in there. Uh, we linked to the existing QIs in the department, so we have about like uh, 15 to 20 active quality improvement projects happening, and we linked all those QIs to our induction, because if you look at it, the end of each quarter or end of each QI's uh, recommendation, let the junior doctors know on the induction about so-and-so, what is about. So what we did was we actively link the things so that, for example, if there's something about the handover, or the doctor's handover over each other, if there's a QI happening, so we will go into our server training session, and in there, there will be a part of it which will talk about uh, how the people previously learned handing over things to each other and how it can be improved. Um, we use also pen pictures where all the doctors will send their pictures in advance and then it goes into the A4 sheet and then it gets displayed in the department and at the bottom everyone will write something about them, what are the ambitions or what are the interesting facts and things about them. So it's just to keep the interest and just to make sure like the teams they know each other now. And that was just part of the welcoming process and that will be disseminated at board rounds and the, 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 the rest of the department before the doctors actually arrived. Um, and with their permission, I also made stuff up as well just to kind of break the ice. Like, yeah, uh, Olivia's leaving the job early because she's got a job as one of the judges on Brits, got talent, or had a nice meeting, so she's going to consult with the entire department. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't think she was going on the Brits and got talent. So this is just an example of the core contents uh, which we've been going through and making sure like we, we don't really go away from the technical skills so we are still covering all the science and all the resuscitation and everything. So what lies in the future for us is now for our focus induction, we will make sure that we still have our previous IT system where you have to go through this two hours of uh, sermon training where they will tell you how to 
click and then you click and then you take one right click and click. So we're going to change all those and make it very ED specific where everyone would have their ability set or things. So that like a working smarter rather than writing the whole thing on the electronic notes, you just work smarter and then you just like uh, have your own smart things set. So uh, similarly, we will just make sure like we do this a session where everyone goes on the shop floor for one hour and then they see the patient or the state industry to be able to find you make their choice. It's very really easy and it's like a good learning opportunity for them. Okay, so that's that's kind of an introduction, so let's just go through the, the, the induction process and as you can see it's an ongoing process. Um, we've still got further plans. What I'm going to talk about is a few specific elements that we've introduced into the content of the induction that, um, as Scott alluded to, that we kind of picked up from the learning that I could derive from the previous MA content. So first, it has to be said, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. These aren't original ideas. And some of the ideas, for example, got from the, um, the gamification workshop that the guys from Leicester uh, ran last year, which was hugely uh, beneficial, for really, really eye-opening, and also not to mention good fun. Um, and the point is, and as we kind of sort of said, it's, it's education or meditation, if you like. And it's, uh, we're trying to make our, uh, what is essentially, inherently, a quite dry process induction, and have what everyone knows as a very dry process, a bit more enjoyable, more memorable, um, and therefore, hopefully, more effective. Um, personally, I'm, I'm quite a fan of behavioural science, so aka nudge theory, and, and, and our approach to revising the induction kind of plays into the ties in with that as well. Uh, this is, you may have seen, this is the East, uh, this is the framework that's used by the Behavioural Insights team for generating change ideas according to nudge theory, and certainly um, we were trying to make induction more social by, by, by gamifying it, getting people into teams, enjoyable, make it more attractive by adding a little competitive element and even not the order the other prize at the end of some of the sessions. And so I'm gonna go we're gonna go into that a little bit more now for the 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 talk. So this is like a session around last time was uh, where everyone in the room will sit here, they will split into two groups and the one group will come up with some pathway or some guidelines saying group A will say uh, how to find the TIA for the path and group B will go on the computer, they will go to the source page and intro that page and then find exactly the way the pathway lies for and then same like between the two and then they will be back with the prize. So instead of just giving them a lecture about where the pathway is lie, we just turn it into two groups, one group is asking for one group is taking away. And it's, it's because also the other thing is is that in induction, um, I'm not worried that our doctors don't know anything. I'm not concerned that our doctors are stupid and they need to be shown how to train some of the chest pain. What I am worried is that they're joined, they're working in a trust which is spread across five different sites and chest pain or renal failure according to which day of the week it is and which way the wind is blowing is is referred in a different way and it's an incredibly complex landscape even for us who've worked there for ages. So actually this, this exercise is to actually help people know where to acquire information, whether it's up to date dot com kind of encyclopedia type information or pathway or downloading a reform or, or, or whatever and that's to introduce that competitive element and make it a bit more effective. Um, again props to Simon, thank you for the, the random patient generator. This is something again which I've been talking about previous MF conference. This is something we introduced to our last induction in April. Um, this is for those of you who don't know, this is an exercise in kind of examining people's decision making skills and how people um, how people think sort of good mental cognition. Um, and essentially it involves printed cards, coloured cards, which um, have either a range of demographics, vital signs, or key clinical information, and then laying those out uh, in, uh, to represent one patient, and then asking the group what they think might be going on in that patient, and what was differential, and why they think that, and what's going to be behind their thinking. And then flipping a card, so you know, from male to female, 83 to maybe 19 year old, um, and then seeing how people's thinking changes, and just seeing whether people, um, uh, just examining about cognitive 
biases um, and system one and system two thinking. Um, Simon's got a fantastic resources <coughs> on his website, which I basically downloaded, and we've got some printed cards from Rivals and printed all of myself. Um, thank you for that, Simon. Uh, this is my version. Uh, it's exactly the same as Simon's, except one change. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, delivery, I just. I just <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Liz. Also, because I didn't actually forgot to take photos of our guys playing it, but this is a photo that I've made off the internet. Thanks to Liz, this is her team um, playing around with the motion generator. That's kind of fun. So that brings me to the induction treasure hunt, uh, which is an idea which uh, was germinated in the game gamification workshop last year. Uh, those of a certain age may get that reference. Um, so what we decided with the treasure hunt is what we were looking for is firstly reinforcing learning some of the other content that was already covered elsewhere in induction, getting, but actually get, getting, getting the guys to actually introduce themselves and meet the, the team, getting the team to meet them, uh, not just you know, in a, you know, in, on your first shift, but actually going out and seeking people out and meeting them. Finding out about key places that would matter to them as junior doctors, whether it's in the department, elsewhere in the wider hospital, like the lab, or doctor's mess, or whatever, or actually outside the hospital as well. Um, and then also with a focus on ensuring that they knew how to, what where to go to look after themselves, whether the feed, water, toilet themselves, etc., etc. And so some of these examples would be sort of technical stuff like the grab bag, where the, where the staff news are, <coughs> meet the senior staff member, uh, taking a selfie with the receptionist, receptionist particularly love that one. Um, actually where the staff gym is, where the decent sandal shop is down the Fulham Palace Road, etc. Et um, I should point out though, it's quite, it's quite important to warn the staff member that you've asked them that you've asked a whole bunch of FY2 doctors to take selfies with them because um, <laughs> otherwise it, it, this is <coughs> the wrong reaction. So what I did there, I then, I then put these clues together. I made a list of uh, uh, a sheet, I think it's about 35 clues. And I, had, uh, um, I paired them into teams, so, and I asked them to pair themselves with someone that they didn't know already. So again, getting them to introduce themselves to each other, and also hopefully implicating a sense of teamwork as well. Uh, and then the pairs would then go off, there would be an internal treasure hunt, an external treasure hunt, so I had half the teams I sent on the internal bit first, so that would be in the ED, uh, just within the ED, and then the other half I'd sent off the external, so that's the wide hospital and outside hospital, because otherwise if you've got like eight pairs of F2s all going around the ED at the same time, it can create a little bit of chaos. And then for some of them, um, some of the answers I also had clues, so I post-it notes with a big letter and a black mark. So that's quite good fun actually, going around the hospital at uh, 9 p.m. the night before with a bunch of post-it notes and black markers. Um, and it's quite good CPD for me to find out what the doctor's best was, etc. Um, and then those clues would all then um, add up to a final clue. Uh, so you collect all of those letters and they would all then add up to one big final clue, which is actually I don't know if anyone knows this, I don't know if anyone's a big fan of Charing Cross Hospital sort of trivia. It's actually Peregrine Falcons. So did you know that Charing Cross Hospital has a family of Peregrine Falcons on their roof? Um, and they did some conservation to actually put together their sort of they, they look after them. And they've even got their own Twitter account uh, and find out Charing Cross Peregrine Falcons. Um, and then at the end, thanks to the League of Friends Hospital shop, uh, there was also a, a, I gave them a couple of books for the prize. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so yeah, it's good for their well-being, it helps them go to sleep. <laughs> so, that was our, so that was our treasure hunt. We found the quality of feedback from that that is enormously popular and it's, very, it's the most memorable part of the ocean. And I think it, it helps certain feedback. We got it helped our new joiners, our new colleagues, uh, retain a lot of information, but actually explore the department, explore the hospital, go and meet people. <coughs> it's quite an enjoyable social activity as well as um, education. So just to sum up what I want you guys to take home, take away with you, um, is I want you to think about in your departments what induction is 
like? Is your induction, is it a dry educational exercise? Is it a risk management exercise? Has it been framed as a way of mitigating um, and, and you know, minimizing the number of patients who are new journey doctors in the um, year? Which it clearly shouldn't be. It, 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 it clearly isn't. So have a think about reframing the induction into a positive experience, welcoming them into your department and implicating them with the culture and values of your department. Also think about QI methodology, and I thought this would be, it really helped us with the planning, but also helped with the measurements and showing our, our induction uh, kind of revision program has been successful and hopefully we'll go some strength to strength. Um, and then the other thing is, and, and a lot of people have already uh, spoken it, uh, and, and given much uh, really, really good uh, examples, both of the process and the course. But gamifying medical education is definitely a, a, useful, a worthwhile approach. It's fun, but it's also actually effective. And finally, our final kind of take home <coughs> is that, um, so this is the fourth area of conference I've come to now. Uh, and I think our induction program uh, and, and the new elements that we've put in, I think are a really, really good illustration of how we, we came to this conference, we had some take home messages, um, but we actually went back to the back, back to base and actually implemented those take home messages. And now they're part of our educational program. So what I'd like to finish with is to say thank you.